I'm David Tracy with Jalopnik. I'm at a junkyard near Detroit on a quest to grab the coolest car parts I can find, take them back to my workbench, and show you how they work. Let's see what I can find. All right, today's mission, we're on a hunt for a turbo. Oh yeah, look at this. We've got one. We need to get to getting this turbo off, so it's time to wrench. Get off the, get off the, get off the, yes. Now, we'll take it home and we'll put it on my workbench and we'll have a closer look. All right, look at this. We've got the turbo system out of the car, on the workbench. Now we can really explain how it all works. Exhaust gases, exit your engine through this exhaust manifold. That spins up the turbocharger turbine wheel, which spins up the compressor wheel. That takes air from this air box, squeezes it, pushes it through this tube into the intercooler, where it gets nice and cold. That cold air comes out into the engine. In this side of the turbo, when it's, you have two high pressures, you've got this bypass valve that can bleed off the high pressure. We're gonna now look at this turbocharger, we're gonna tear it apart, see what it looks like inside. So now that we've got the compressor inlet tube off and the exhaust pipe off, we can start to see some awesome parts in this turbocharger already. On the compressor side, you can see the compressor wheel. On the exhaust side, there's even more action going on. So there's a part that I haven't mentioned yet, and that's this wastegate. It takes exhaust from your engine, and instead of sending it into the turbine wheel to spin it up, it actually diverts it around it. So now we're gonna crack this thing open and get even an even closer look. After a battle to the death with a seized retaining ring, the compressor housing and the center section are ready to be separated. So we've got a snail-shaped compressor housing. Air gets sucked in through the end, gets squeezed, and then comes out tangentially. That's the opposite of the turbine side where the exhaust comes in tangentially, spins up the turbine wheel just like paddles on a water mill, and then that exits through the end. Now that we've got a good look at both wheels, we're gonna take them both off the shaft and have a closer look at the bearings. Oh. Oh. Some turbochargers use ball bearings. This one uses journal bearings. It's essentially just a bronze sleeve with a bunch of holes drilled in it to allow oil between it and the shaft so that the shaft can glide on a thin film of lubricant nice and smoothly. This turbocharger's got two journal bearings, the one on the shaft, and then there's still one in the housing. Both of them are fed oil via this oil port. There's a little fork in the road to send oil to the front bearing and to send oil to the back bearing. There is another bearing. It is a thrust bearing. Its job is to prevent this shaft from moving axially. Another cool thing are these piston rings. There's a piston ring on the turbine side, one on the compressor side. They're there to prevent oil from spilling out of the whole casing. That's it. We've torn into the turbo. That's how it all works. Let's see what the junkyard has in store for us next time. Both of them are fed oil through this oil passage. That is not true. I've actually never dealt with this linkage before, but it looks fairly straightforward. Oh, I just broke it. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. Someone's gonna get hurt, and that someone is going to be me. More, more cowbell. We can look at some of the awesome, cool stuff like bearings. Awesome, cool stuff, that's stupid. Would there be any advantage to, uh... to hammering this bitch as hard as I can? I would say yes, sir. You know, do you even lift, bro? The ecstasy clip. So after allowing this seized retaining ring to ruin my life, this compressor housing and center section should now separate fairly simply here. I said should, but will. F. 